Sun's on deck. The sun is out and breakfast is served on the gun deck. You too, boy. Ian! Oh, I'm not well, sir. It's probably the food from last night. I don't really feel like eating anything right now. Oh, really? Well, I don't trust Andres Bangers and Mash either. But you won't make me believe that they made you sick. That would be way too convenient for you. I'm not lying, Caleb. My stomach tells me that something's wrong. That's Mr. Haywood to you, boy. And I know exactly what you're thinking. You heard that Ludlow was sick this morning, so you're trying to blame it on the food. <laughs> nice try, boy. Now get up and start running. No, I won't. You can't force me. I... I'm going on strike. Ha! <laughs> Don't make me laugh, kid. You wouldn't last a day. Excuse me, but I could take over the boys' duties for today, if that is necessary. You the new guy. Rensburg, ain't it? I'm Haywood, boatswain on this here ship. If you want to help, you could report to Officer Brunswick at the helm. Needs his boy to do an errand for him. But since this wretch won't get out of bed, I don't mind you doing it. Though, if I were you, I wouldn't do no favor for that lazy kid. No problem, Hayward. I'll get right to it. Just follow the instructions Officer Brunswick gives you. Now off to the helm with you. All day long you could hear the chickens cackle. Though the meat was reserved for friends of the captain, their eggs were a special treat for the crew at weekends. The capstan is a rotating device that is used to apply force to ropes, cables and hawsers. But I have heard that some captains tie disobedient sailors to it, with their arms and legs spread across the levers. Um, seasick again. Yeah! Ugh. Looking through the grate, I could see the gun deck below. The bilge pump on the weather deck was used every day. Even in good weather, some water tends to end up below decks. I don't need them, Captain. Might I suggest we raise the studding sails to maximize our speed? I still want to see them, Rupert. Where is that boy of yours? Get him to fetch the maps. I haven't seen him this morning. It's possible that he's still... 
Ah, good morning, Rensburg. Nice to see you up and running. Rupert, have you made the acquaintance of Devon Rensburg yet? He's our new sailor. Yes, yes, we already met last night. Good morning, Rensburg. Good. Now, Rensburg, have you by any chance seen a boy named Ian this morning? He is ill, Captain. Not feeling well at all, he said. So I'm taking his place for today. When is that boy going to step up his game, Rupert? He's your student. Discipline him, or I will. Ian seems a bit unhappy, Captain. Maybe we should give the boy some space? Nonsense. The boy is weak. He needs to be dealt with swiftly, lest he never become a man. I agree that Ian might be a bit weak, frail even, but a man with his gentleness is something the world might benefit from one day. Hmm. Some say you're soft, officer, but I appreciate your honesty. There is no denying that it has got you quite far in life. Please, just leave the boy for a day. I'm sure Rendsburg will do fine in his stead. Right, Rendsburg? I'll do my best, sir. What should I do first? The captain would like to see my maps. Since Ian's not here, I'd like you to fetch them for me. My map of the European coast should be somewhere in my desk. I'll tell you a secret. I keep a spare key to my cabin in the pitcher in the officer's hallway. The pitcher contained a spare key to Officer Brunswick's cabin. I got the sudden urge to write something obscene in one of Brunswick's books. I realized that this was an incredibly stupid idea. A beautiful brass sextant was sitting on Brunswick's writing slope. I recall a teacher telling me how this complex device works, but I'll be damned if I can remember. Looking through the Merchant Navy's handbook, I discovered that officers are usually allowed to carry guns, but other members of the crew are not. A broken compass lay shattered inside Brunswick's desk. It was a shame to see such a delicate object destroyed. I found Brunswick's maps of the European coast inside the drawer of his desk. On the writing slope lay a detailed map of the African coast, the sea full of lines, markings and notes I didn't understand. On the top shelf stood a portrait of a stern-looking man. I later learned it was Brunswick's mother. I 
I was surprised to find Brunswick's spyglass in here. You'd think a navigator would keep that with him at all times. The entire bookcase was devoted to poetry. Among them were some of the most famous works by Shakespeare, Byron, and Poe. A painting of the night sky was hanging on the wall. The use of colours was striking. I found Brunswick's maps of the European coast inside the drawer of his desk. What took you so long? Were you lost? My cabin isn't that big, you know. I'm sorry, sir. I'll ensure that I'm faster next time. Ian would have done such a simple task in mere seconds. Give me the maps, Ransberg. Well, that's convenient. According to these calculations, raising the studding sails might double our speed. Ransberg, find Boat's Wayne Haywood and ask him where he keeps his studding sails. He's probably somewhere near his workshop. Look, Uncle! Water as far as the eye can see. Imagine how big the world must be. Yes, dear. You again. So how does your new job suit you, huh? I'm doing fine. It's not the best work, but it's not that hard either. Well, of course they wouldn't trust you with hard work like mine. Now would they? So, what do you want? I'm here to collect a set of sails called studding sails. They say you keep them here somewhere. Ah, so you're the official errand boy now, huh? Well, it just so happens I need something done. What exactly are you talking about? Someone's been sneaking around my workbench. The key to the weapons cache was in a different drawer than usual. So, I checked the cache and discovered I am missing a Colt 44. If the captain finds out, we'll all be held responsible. So we need to find that thing before he gets wind of it. Why not tell the captain and let the officers sort the matter out? <laughs> you expect them to care about who did it? Even though only one gun has disappeared, we'll all get the whip for it. You've never seen the captain in a fit. He can be a brute when he believes he has to discipline his crew. I still got the gashes on my back from the last time he made an example out of us. You are new, fresh meat that needs to be tenderized in the eyes of our superiors. Now, go and find out who stole that thing, will you? 
And be careful what you ask people. We don't want to cause a panic now, do we? According to Hayward, his saw had once been used by Dr. Gerrick when Sylvain, one of the sailors, got stuck between the gears of the cargo winch. Since that day, it's been a lot easier for me to tell them brothers apart, he added with a smirk. I'm not feeling well today. Please, let me sleep. It was a peculiar place for a sink. I suspect it didn't fit in the officers' cabins. God forbid that officers have to use the same one as the rest of us. The announcement was torn in two. Someone didn't agree. Rensburg, what are you doing up here? Shouldn't you be getting those seals? It's, uh, it's a bit embarrassing, sir. But I, um, I wanted to tell you that, um, I'm, I'm afraid of pirates. I've read the stories of what they do to sailors like us. How do the crew protect themselves from such scoundrels? You've been scaring yourself with children's literature, Rensburg. Piracy has been dead for years. Though I have to be honest, I met a pirate once. <laughs> Not very scary, just a foolish robber who thought he could earn easy money by killing people. Such savagery. But you should hurry up now and get those studding sails from the boatswain. There was one particular corner on the main deck where the captain couldn't see you from the poop or front deck. Littered with boxes, barrels and sacks, it provided cover for those in a bit of a lazy mood. A brass sign forbade anyone but passengers and officers to enter the deck house. It appeared to have been placed quite recently. Taking a short break to get water from the scuttlebutt was usually just an excuse to congregate with fellow sailors. I was wise enough not to stretch this privilege, not wanting the captain getting cranky with me. Came to tell me off too? How are you feeling now, Ian? Fine. Just let me be, will ya? I just needed some fresh air. I don't know what's going on, but I sense you need help. Is there anything I could do for you? Stop with the fake concerns. Who are you anyway? 
the Brunswick sent you to talk me around. I'm Devon Rensburg. I'm new. Last night, when I entered the forecastle, I heard two people fighting. It was you and Officer Brunswick. What was going on in there, Ian? I told him the truth, that I've had enough of him and his weird requests. He is everywhere I go, around every corner and in every room. I'm sick of the man. His presence alone drives me completely insane. Did Brunswick hurt you, Ian? Well, on some nights, he wants me to come to his cabin. And when I do, he'll ask me to sit on the side of his bed. Then, he takes out a notebook, one that he hides for fear of others reading it. And then he forces me to listen to him reciting his corny poetry. So, you said he hid his notebook. Do you know if he hides other things too? Brunswick often hides his most prized possessions. Like his compass, the one that he got as a present from his own mentor, Francis Beaufort. He gave me the thing as a present, but I refused. Next thing I know, it's on my pillow with a wee note telling me to be more grateful. All right. I'm sure there's more. Maybe he's written his secrets in his notebook. You should go to his cabin and search his bookcase. If there's anything he's hiding, it'll be there.